Hello everyone, this is Mighty Scott here with another episode of Arcanum, the series. We are now on our way to Kantara. So, we do have teleportation. We can, I believe, just go there, straight there. Bypass the pass and then just go straight there. So let's try that out now. Yep, there we go. This is it. Uh, you do, if you do want to go through Hardin's Pass, there are quite a few monsters. You have to go from one side to the other side, which makes it a little bit more of a pain. Um, but if you have teleportation, it should be pretty easy. So let's go talk to this guy. Uh, we are an elf brother, so he will freely let us go in. Alright, so there are a few quests we can do in here. Um, let's see. Let's talk to this guy here. What's your name? His name is Wind, Master of the Hunt. Alright. Pleasure is mine. You said you're a Master of the Hunt. We have a group of hunters who supply Kintaro with food and other supplies. I am, I am their commander. I see. Are there a lot of hunters here in Kantara? No, we are a small community here. We never need to have more than three or four at any given time. Say, so do you happen to know the hour? Sure. Uh, I'm very worried. There's a hunter who left here yesterday and hasn't returned. Normally, I'd not be concerned, but he was hunting in the forest near the dark fens. There are strange things in those swamps. That's worrisome. Could I be of help? Would you? I need to go to another hunt, but I could tell you where he was hunting, and you could travel there. I'm sure it's nothing, but I get worried about my hunters. If you could see to it that he's safe, that he's safely on his way home, I could offer you some elven chainmail. Done. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so that's uh, the first quest, and he's going to take us to uh, a village. Let's go over to this way, I guess. Uh, I'm surprised to see a dwarf here. So this is a dwarf guy here. Let's see if we can see him. There he is. Surprised to see a dwarf here. Uh, this is my home. What do you wish of me? Uh, was a dwarf doing Kantara? Better place to train the ways of magic. Uh, Tuller, perhaps? Legendary city of mages? I would have had even less of a chance to be accept accepted there. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? You being a mage and all that. I've been dwarven. I've been drawn towards the magic for my entire life. Unlike most dwarves, I had no affinity for things. Of the technological nature. So what do you live? So that's why you live here? I'm under a tutorial agreement to my teacher, Wrath. I'm unable to leave him until the contract is finished. Uh, how long is the contract for? My contract runs until the end of Wrath's life. <laughs> in exchange for training in the magical arts, I agree to serve him, but that bitter old elf can last another two, possibly three hundred years. Why did you agree to such interminable lengths of service? No elf wanted to take a dwarf as an apprentice. It was best offer I could get. I wasn't bad at first when Wrath was simply sh uh, surly. Over the past 50 years or so, he's become increasingly bitter and difficult to work for. I do not know what I will do if I can't convince him to release me soon. Why don't you just leave? I never dishonor myself, so the only thing that can release me besides his death is his word. Perhaps I can convince him to release you. Thank you for the offer, but your interference would only serve to anger him, which would lead to greater torment for myself at this hands. If certainly, I suppose I'd be on my way then. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit of a internal quest. We need to figure out 
kind of a detective quest. Let's go talk to uh, Wrath. Uh, yeah, so here's Wrath, Jorman's mentor. Uh, seems to be dead. And there's a wine glass on him. And let's get his robes. He was already dead. So let's go talk to Jorman again. What business do you have here? Jorman is under arrest for murder. You believe he killed Wrath? Who else could have done it? Elves like us don't kill each other. Besides yourself, he was the only other outsider in Katara when the murder occurred. Okay. How was he killed, if I may ask? We haven't determined that as of yet. At this point, all we know is that we can find no evidence of any injuries or weapons. What magic? Quench life would have done the trick? No, we can tell are acutely attuned to the flows. If any mad dark necromancy had been used, uh, he would have felt it. Very interesting. May I go speak with him? Sure, go on in, but don't try anything. I'll be listening out here. I'll be departing now. I don't believe you're killed, guilty of killing Wrath. Uh, the guard said that wasn't any magic involved. Is there any evidence that you know of? This is just glass. Strange odors show him. Um, so he tells us to go talk to the apothecary Sharp. Alright, sure, I'll give it a go. He'll give us a staff, uh, Zoranth, if we help him. Uh, accept your offer, sir. Good day. Alright, so now we have to go talk to the apothecary. Alright, so this is the place here. Um, we don't want to talk to her. This is actually his wife, uh, Sharp's wife. What we can do is we can just wait till night. Let's advance the time to evening. And then let's go to about four hours she's gonna leave and nobody else is around so we can actually go in and um, check out his stash here there we go it's poison Alright, so what you want to do is then uh, just wait till morning now. Alright, so what we're going to do is talk to Ivory here, who is Sharp's wife. Uh, you say you're looking for Sharp. You, you show him the vial, or show her the vial. And so it's one of the vials that you got from the store. Um, she asks you where you got it from, that's an important. And you can say that this poison, same poison that was used to kill Wrath. Well, can you tell me about Wrath? Uh, why did he become angry when you began living together? Um, he felt you violated Elven customs. Did Sharp hate Wrath enough to kill him? She gets she gets angry. Uh, so could you have poison Wrath to protect you? So what purpose would murder serve? Um, yourself, you, you yourself said Wrath was unbalanced. 
Uh, this is disturbing me. I don't wish to speak about it anymore. So now you could just say, uh, fine, this vial is enough to show that Sharp is guilty. Uh, but he can't have killed him. He's a good man, not like Wrath. Uh, so Wrath was evil? What? No, of course not. But you did say Wrath was not a good man. Wrath had a black heart. I can't believe we were ever friends with him. He turned and, fa and when he found out, I didn't love him. He was in love with you? He was the one who suggested I live with him. I like the idea, strange as it may be, but I never felt anything but friendship towards Wrath. Sharp was the one I loved. So what happened then? That's when Wrath became a truly miserable person. He would come around when Sharp wasn't here and try to convince me that either I should love him or that Sharp was somehow not worthy of me. When I finally told him to stop bothering me is when he began threatening me. Wait a minute, he threatened you? Threats became progressively worse. He threatened to kill Sharp at one point. Last thing he, he said um, to me was that he didn't. He wouldn't let Sharp have me if he couldn't. I see. I think he killed himself and framed Sharp. Uh, by the gods, that bastard did it. I cannot believe he could be that bitter to kill himself. What a fool. I'd best go tell the guards so they release Dormant. If you ever need anything from us, please don't hesitate to pay us a visit. You're most generous, ma'am. So we found out the story is that Wrath killed himself in order to frame Sharp so that he would go to jail forever. So let's go save Jorman now and get his staff. Let's tell the guard now. Wrath killed himself, he was trying to frame Sharp. An elf killing himself? That's unheard of. Killing the physical body would disrupt the flow, it would be the final death. I would expect an agitator such as Ivory to think of something so ridiculous. It was Wrath who concocted, that, concocted the idea of them living together. The Jenner, I knew Sharp must have led astray by someone. He was always a good egg, he was. Can we have Jormin released then? Certainly. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Here we go. Thank you for clearing my name. You're welcome. Here's the staff I promised you. All right. You can have him join your party if you wanted to, but we don't have the charisma to do that. Perhaps I'll meet you again one day. Good day. So we did get the staff. It's the staff of Zorath. It's more of a melee weapon than anything else. I don't think it'll provide us with fatigue. No. So that is this part of the uh, one of the quests done. So that is one of the quests done. So now we can go talk to someone else. Um. Somebody's going to ask me for some stuff that I don't have. I should have brought it, though. I think it's, uh, let's see. Let's go back over here. So I'll talk to this guy here. Hello, good elf. Might I ask who you are? Uh, Elliman. I'm a craftsman. All right. Can I can I can see you were good with wood. Where do you get the metal? I have many suppliers. Uh, so he wants. Uh, many of my objects are incomplete without it. Okay. I use Mergano metals. 
I see, man. Perhaps I can ass assist you in obtaining more. So he wants us to go find Mithril for him. So that's a quest. Talk to this person here. Uh, greetings, maiden. Ken Nedral, you can call me Fawn. I give you greetings. Might I inquire to your position? Uh, forgive me, I'm not telling you before. I am accustomed to everyone knowing my position. Master Healer. Okay. Might I impose on you further? Let us trade. So we can get some stuff from her. Okay, so what we want to do now is talk to this person here. Uh, I'm going to ask who you are. Her name is Whisper. And she asks who I am. I am Midas Gun. It's a pleasure to meet you, Midas Gun. What brings you to Kentara? I would, uh, you just select the, it's a long story and tell her all that happened. Uh, so all of your adventures started when you walked from the wreckage of that, what did you call it? Uh, blimp? Uh, yes. Th that is quite a tale. I appreciate you trusting me with it. I'd like to give you something as well. Perhaps aid you in your coming days. Uh, she hands me a gem. It might be help. It might help you to, well, uh, a little less conspicuous. Okay, so it's a gem that turns us invisible. Thank you. All right. What do you do here? A scientist? Uh, what creatures do you study? Um, what do you mean by essence? I see perhaps I could be of assistance to you. She wants us to get uh, the essence of a Valar's Wisp. So we see them sometimes in the in the uh, glimmering forests, but they are pretty common later on. All right, I'll do so in return. Very well. So there we go. We have quests from her. Let's go ahead and talk to uh, the person up here. Raven. She's, she's uh, the person in, that kind of the corresponds with the Silver Lady. Greetings, stranger. What is it you need? I'm sorry, I don't believe we've met. No, you're correct. We've never met. Uh, okay. What is your name, madame? My name is very old and very long. Perhaps it would be best if you simply called me Raven. Interesting. Do you have a moment? Of course. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Certainly. How can I help you? I need to speak with the Silver Lady. The Silver Lady? Oh, you mean my mother. That's quite a request, and one not so easily granted. Even for an elf? I mean, I am one of you. That might very well be. But you're not from here, and I'm very cautious when it comes to who sees my mother. She may be our queen, but I oversee the daily matters here in Kintara. I see how can I convince you of the urgency of my quests. You'll have your chance. Forgive me if I seem a little abrupt, but I have many things on my mind today and there's much to be done. Once I've taken care of some of the more pressing matters, I'll talk with you about your needs. I understand. Perhaps I could be of service? Why, yes. It's always a pleasure to work with an elven brother from the outside. We'd love to have your help. My pleasure. What can I do? There is a group of humans camped about a day's journey from here. We know not what they want, but where humans go, trouble usually follows. What would you like me to do? The place they are camped at is called Falcon's Egg, and it is considered a holy place for the elves of Kentara. We would like you to find out why the humans are there and remove them. I'll do it. Splendid. Are you sure you understand what needs to be done? There are a few things that are very important that you know. Come to think of it, uh, I do have a few questions. Of course. What would you like to know? How do I get to Falcon's Ake? It's not far from here. I'll mark your map with the location. 
Uh, a few more course. questions. What would you like to know? Uh, what sort of place is it? Falcon's Ake, as I told you, is Elven Holy Ground. Many years ago, there was an Elven Queen, and her name was Falcon. She was out hunting one day, and with her bow shot a stag. When she had caught up with it, it was lying next to a pool of water, slowly bleeding from a wound in its side. What happened? The stag spoke to her, and within it were the spirits of the elves who had become the soul of the stag, and with her arrow she had pierced both it and them. And they were both sad and afraid, as the stag's life was their own, and when it died, so would they. What did Falcon do? She could do nothing. She sat with the stag's head in her arms, sang its stories, and washed its wound with her tears. And the ache in her heart grew as the old elven voices faded. Grew so much that when they finally passed, she passed with them. I am leaving now. Okay, so we have to go in. Uh, we have two quests outside of the village. Um, we, can, we can get a third one, which is right here. I think this person here. Who might you be? Her name's Swift. Um, your adventurer, are you not? Yes, I am. Okay, so she wants to go to Tarant. So I've visited there. Would you be interested in a job as a guide? What do you have in mind? She'll pay 300 coins to bring her to Tarant safely. Sounds like an agreeable arrangement. Um, how old are you actually? 150 years old. Why? Uh, just curious. Are you ready to leave? I say equivalent to like a, I don't know, like a 10 year old. All right, let's go. We can uh, speed this up. Alright, she is a part of our party now. And we could speed it up by just teleporting there. There you go. Thank you for bringing me here. I was supposed to, I'll be on my way. Here's what the coin I promised you. Thank you, I'll be seeing you. Okay, let's go back. So we can go to Falcon's Egg, and we also have the uh, quest to go to this uh, village here. So let's go there first. Alright, so uh, these guards here. Here's the elf guy we're supposed to find. There's some hearthstone here that we're going to need for a later uh, quest. Let's go talk to the chieftain and definitely want to grab these heart stones. Here's the chieftain. You may be able to convince him that uh, elves are good. Warm blood betrayer, offspring murderer. What brings you here? What death do you bring? What lies will you tell? Khan Karai stands before you. My power is great. Greater than yours. I'm sorry, have we met before? I've never seen your kind. I know you, betrayer. I know all your faces, warm blood. All the same, all liars and murderers, all bringers of death. What do you mean you know all our faces? Your two faces, your words, your lies, 
The Badokan have lived here in the dark fens since the moon was young and the waters sang us songs. We are old, we speak not your language. You know not our ways, the cold blood ways. Yes, but not all warm bloods are the same. No, all warm bloods fear the Badokan. All warm bloods know not our ways. This guy's hard to read. Um, your hate and destroy without reason. Uh, have elves, sharp beards, killed your people before you? No, sharp ears have not killed Bedouin before. Uh, nor have they ruined the land. But we are not e easy prey, warm blood. A hunter in different skins is similar hun a hunter. Neither elves nor I have, har have done har your harm. Yes, the words you speak are true, but it does not mean that you will not. Agreed, I am called Mighty Skan. And I am Khan Karai. Um, have you come in defense of this elf? Perhaps I need to know what happened here. You would hear our story? Very well. As I've said, the Bedokan have lived here in the Dark Fins for as long as the seasons. Uh, okay. So they were hunted by warm bloods. They were like elves, a little darker, not as tall. They had no words of power, but they had strange weapons and rode strange beasts made of wood. I see, men in wagons. Where did they come from? From the south. What did you say these men did with the Baizari people? Uh, okay, they skinned our elders and our children, our women. Eugh. Your god, Potrus. I'm so very sorry, Kinkara. I believe your words, Mighty Scan. Perhaps you are different. Perhaps you might be able to see the cold visions. Uh, but I will do so nonetheless. Um, make war, but it is only these men. Yes, but there is a price in warm blood that must be paid. All men will die, and then all of our all of their offspring until there are none left. Uh, please, you must allow me to convince you otherwise. No, there are no words. What else can be done? You can pay the price demanded by the Snake Father of my Scone if you are warm blood. If a warm blood was to kill those responsible, then I would go and not wage war against them all. The cold blood ways. Okay, yes, I will do so. You will? Good. Here's the place their men were last seen. Good day. So he wants us to go kill the poachers. Let's go there and kill the poachers. <laughs> Hello there, mate. Strange to see you walking about. Tell me, what are you doing out here? I've come here to kill you. <laughs> That's so. Might I ask you why? I see you have been sent by the Bedokin. Ah. Bloody lizard lover here, boys. Thought people like you only lived in the big cities. Brave words. Hmm. All right. String offer, what are the terms? So one of these guys has like an elephant gun on him, and that is uh, not fun to get hit with.
Okay, so we do get uh, a lot of stuff here. What is it that you want of me? Let's trade some stuff. You can have all the guns. Yeah, here's the uh, elephant gun. If you were a uh, fused gun, that's a really good gun to have. Get rid of this stuff. I don't need this. What is it that you want of me? All right, let's go back to the uh, village here. Uh, what do you want from me? I've killed the poachers. You have good, perhaps, the warm blood here. Art is not evil. I'm glad the men I killed deserved it. Good day to you. Alright, so we get to have our friend. Thank you, stranger. Welcome back to Kantara, I recommend you do the same. Alright. Before we do that, we have to go and take care of the men here. Alright, so here's Falcon Zake. You don't want your people to attack. Um, so let's. Uh, move away. Let's have these guys wait. Let's have them wait here. Stay. Okay. What is it that you want of me? Yes, of course. What would you like me to do? I don't like leaving you alone. Okay. Yeah, if they uh, attack first, then you will die. But you want them to attack first. William Bench, outdoorsman. I speak with you. What are you doing? The surveyor for the Torringsdale Logging Company. No real problem here. Oh, really? He crossed his arms. And what might that be? Fortunately, you're not supposed to be here anymore. I see no problem here, stranger. <coughs> All right. It says that we're trespassing. This is Elvin Holy Grail. Your presence here is travesty. I don't see any signs here naming the place as such. Um, I don't think you understand. No, friend, you don't understand. Move longer. Alright, so you can just make upset. Uh, your battling makes me sick. There you go. They all died. You don't want to be the one to do the first attack. That's not a good thing, because then you'll die. Let's get our people back in our party. What is it that you want of me? I'm ready to get going. Hmm. 
There we go. Let's go back to uh, Kintara. Talk to him, turn the quest in. Give us some elven chainmail, which is pretty nice. Hello again. Certainly. Thank you very much. A dark tale for I do not. No. You need to speak with my mother of these things. She's just beyond the large door behind me. But be warned. My mother is a magical being of great power. Her spirit swims in the flow, and sometimes she is more of that world than this one. What she sees is not always what we see, so her answers might seem strange to you. Ask what you wish to know, and listen. When you're through speaking with her, come and find me. I will. Alright, so here's the Silver Lady. Hello. Let's talk to her. I welcome you, Traveler. Greetings to you, Silver Lady. I thank you for this audience. I know you've come far. And I've expected you for a long time now. Uh, I spoke to Polonius Schuler. He said something similar to me. Polonius Schuyler? Ah, yes. I see him now, speaking with the dead. Or is he among them? It matters not, I suppose. They're all watching you. Wait, what are you talking about? I've seen you approaching from both east and west, Traveler. And you bring them with you, all of them. They've no choice but to follow. I don't understand. I know, I know. We speak different languages, you and I. The things I see, wrapped in the past and the present, and shrouded in the veils of magic. I cannot translate my visions into your own. You must listen, traveler. Listen and learn to see. I will try. What is it you see, traveler? The Black Mountain Clan, where are they? Yes, I can see them. But the ravens are circling, and the storm rages but subsides. And yet there is lightning, and then shadow, and then the storm howls again, tearing. I can't even look at it. That makes no sense to me. Wait. Oh, look. They've taken in a small child with machine dreams and hands of hinged metal and a heart in which Kong burns brightly. That's Gilbert Bates, but what? That was in the past. I don't know of what you speak, Traveler. Please listen. Try to hear with my ears. I see a flame atop a hill burning so brightly. And below, a field of wheat around a pool of water, and the flames spitting fire and consuming the wheat and the lake and losing itself as well. Is there anything else? The clan, do you see anything else? It's dark here. So dark. And the flame is here too. But this flame burns black onyx and cold, and shadow is its child. Are they here as well? I can't see that far. What else? A plane of mirrored glass. A sky of white. A lone figure. Wait. Which is the reflection? I'm unsure. You're speaking in riddles. That is all I see, Traveler. The riddle is created by you. Do you have anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, Mingorad. What can you tell me of that name? Mingorad. An old name, Traveler. Oh, a man is screaming and carves a key with his fingers. And the birds have plucked his eyes out. And the wolf watches, motionless, his paw in the air. Is it Mingorad? Is he dead? And what does the wolf mean? A tear in the curtain and only darkness beyond. A ragged wound, mended with a ring of blasted stone. What else? What else do you see of Mingarad? A hand that sees, but is blinded. 
A man draped in truth, wearing a mask. You've lost me. And they hide. The lost children, they hide. A gray mist, even to me. But there, he runs, dropping veined and painted leaves. And the flock comes, talons outstretched, and wings of fire, and he is consumed. But the leaves... What? Run quickly, traveler. Find what was left behind. In the place of smoke and water, he is there. He is there. Who, Mingarad? I see no more. The stream is again calm. Was there anything else? Am I the living one? The living one? <laughs> oh, traveler, why would you think I would know of such a thing? It's a prophecy. I assume you can see what is to come. <laughs> it's an interesting thing about prophecies, traveler. They're no clearer to one such as myself, living both in and out of the stream, than they are to you, walking the shore. The flow swirls around them, until they are ready. And in the end, really, is it going to matter who someone pointed a finger at? That would be comforting if people weren't trying to kill me. These people can only see what follows in your wake, Traveler. Pass your hand through the flame and it flickers. If you've tired of the mantle, then shed it. Disappear. Otherwise, don't be surprised at what people do. <laughs> no, but I understand almost none of what you said. I know that, Traveler. But I also know that clarity is often the child of time. Your answers lie both in front and behind. Make sure not to overlook one for the other. Characteristically cryptic, dear lady. <laughs> I go now, Traveler. We will meet again, though I'm not sure on which side. No matter. All right. Hello again. It's so very good to see you. Hello, Raven. Do you have a moment to speak? Certainly. How can I help you? I spoke with your mother about what happened. And what did you ask her about? I asked her about the Black Mountain Clan. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? She saw ravens, lightning, and a violent storm. Ravens and a storm? And why did the storm subside and then rage once again? Nothing in my mother's visions is ever what it seems. We'll have to think on this. Well, she also had visions of Mingarad. Mingarad? What did she see? Uh, an eyeless man in pain carving a key. A wolf with a raised paw. What the screaming man and his key represent, I have no idea. But I do know that the official symbol for the city of Caledon is a wolf, with one paw raised in the air. Perhaps we need to begin our search there, Raven. I'm not so sure. Remember... My mother's visions are shackled by neither our eyes nor our time. The events she describes might be in either the future or the past. Let's look at all she said before we go any further. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? Uh, a flame that consumed a wheat field and a poor pool of water. I'm not sure what that represents, but I know that fire in her visions often represents magic. And the water you say quenched it? Or did the flame burn itself out? Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? The BMC with a small machine-like child. As you told her, this must have been the man you know as Gilbert Bates. She saw him because he plays such a large role in their fate. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? A dark place with a dark fire and a mirrored plane. There are two separate visions. The flame again represents magic, but twisted somehow, burning darkly. And did you say that the Black Mountain Clan was near this flame? The mirrored plane, a white sky, a lone figure. The worlds on either side of that mirror are the same. Who could say which one is real? Odd. She also had visions of Mingarad. Mingarad. What did she see? A torn curtain, a ringed, broken finger pointing east. There's something about that entire vision which pulls at my memory. Especially the ring. I'll think about it further. Mingarad. What did she see? A hand that sees but is blind, a truthful man in a mask. I have no idea.
Wait, that sounds like an, a symbol on an amulet I've seen. Interesting. That's the ancient symbol of the Malokian hand. Do you know of it? Can you tell the me Malokian a bit? hand were assassins for what used to be known as the Darian Ka, the ancient order of the dead. Okay. I don't really know. Although it would seem that perhaps they are being misled. Blindness in my mother's visions is sometimes associated with deception. As far as the man in the mask was draped in truth, I have no idea. There were other visions of Mingarad. Mingarad? What did she see? A lost, hiding children, a man runs from them and drops leaves. This one is the most interesting of all, and it seems that my fears may have well been correct. Why? Do you remember when I told you that the name of Mingarad bothered me in some way? Well, I believe that may have been so because Mingarad is a dark name. What does it mean? A dark elf name. Do you know of the dark elves? I've heard very little. Could you elaborate? It's a long story. But sometime during the Age of Legends, many years even before my mother was born, there were a group of elves who separated themselves. There were philosophical differences, and they were no longer welcome in our forests. Those elves became what we know as the Dark Elves. What were the differences? They believe that this world and all of its races are subject to elven rule. They believe that elves are superior because of our close connection to nature, our power in the ways of magic, and the longevity of our physical form. They see the other races as bumbling children who need our guidance, regardless of its severity. And what do you believe? I believe. Well, let us say that I don't always see eye to eye with those in Kintara concerning the rightful place of the Dark Elves. My role here is as protector. I will do so regardless of the cost. Okay. My mother's vision of the lost children was referring, I believe, to the Dark Elves. They were hidden from her because they are hidden from all of us. Through magic and isolation, we've not seen where they live for almost 500 years. Who was the man running from them? There was a man many years ago who had come to the Glimmering Forest to study the elves. And I remember that he was very interested in the Dark Elves especially. There were rumors about his capture by them and an escape. Who was he? As I said, he was a researcher. A strange little man, a bit overdressed, but kind-hearted and very intelligent. I was young then, a mere 160 years old. You remember he was his... the first human I'd ever seen. Do you remember his name? His name? It was a long time ago, but I remember because he said it so often. I think humans just like hearing the sound of their own names. <laughs> Terwilliger. Dr. Renford A. Terwilliger. I can hear him saying it even now. <laughs> what is the place of smoke and water? She could mean almost anywhere. But if I were to make a guess, I'd say she was talking about the human city of Tarant. It lies in the Gulf of Morbihan, and it's... What do you call them? Factories? are always belching smoke into the skies. That and, I know that Terwilliger was from there. What are the leaves he was dropping? I don't know. It almost seemed in the vision that the flock who consumed him were more interested in the leaves. And my mother even said to find what was left behind, these leaves might very well be what we're looking for. What now? You have a place to begin your search, my friend. It would seem that if you need to find this Mingarod, you're going to need to find the village of the Dark Elves. The only person who might know where they are is Renford A. Terwilliger. He may or may not be in Tarant, but it's a good place to start looking. Then I will find the Dark Elves. To Tarant I shall go. You impress me, my friend. Few are those like you who would take this burden upon themselves. You've earned my respect. <laughs> Your respect makes it all worthwhile. Return to me when you found the Dark Elves. And tell me what you uncover. We will have much to discuss. I'll return when I know more. Goodbye. So that's going to be it for this episode. And the next episode we will continue on with uh, going to Tarant. So for now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.